thanks for staying with us. Welcome along. A brand new season and a brand new hour of Premier League tonight. All the best football debate is coming your way over the next 60 minutes. And what a stunning return has been for the Premier League as well. Uh, let's have a quick look at the headlines from what has been a very busy day. Let's have these three sitting there in disbelief for a lot of the day. First of all, opening day blues. I'm sorry, Frank. It will get better on BT Sport. This is not how it's going to be on a regular basis, but it really was opening day blues for Conte and his team, and we'll, of course, talk about that in detail. Meanwhile, top terriers, not only the win, but also top of the league for Huddersfield. It couldn't have started better for them today. And finally, guess Roo's back. We had to wait a while, but Wayne Rooney in goal-scoring form on his return to Everton. Right, so much to talk about, lots going on, but we're going to start with Natalie, who's a Burnley fan. Natalie, the show is all yours. Oh, my God. Guys, I, my emotions, I've lost all control over them. My heart is racing at about a million beats a second. And I just don't really know what to do myself. That was the most excruciating last 45 minutes of an entire football game I have ever watched in my life. 3-0 up at half-time in absolute dreamland, and we end up just hanging on in the last stages for a win. But once I've calmed down and once I've started breathing at a normal, healthy pace again, I am delighted with that. No worries about winning away from home this season. Burnley got the points on the board straight away. Opening game away from home at the Champions. We'll have that. Thank you very much. But everybody's going to be talking about Chelsea, but that is some reaction. Reminds you what it means to be a Burnley fan who struggled so much away from home last season, as Natalie said. Yeah, it's a terrific result. And, and if you think about it, they've lost the, the best player in the last week, great to Watford. So congratulations to them. Fantastic start to the season. You know, can they build on that now and try and make it an easier season than, than last year? Yeah, they set the benchmark, haven't they? Well, they have, of course. They have. I mean, I think we'll go back to... You know, the way Chelsea finished the game, with, certainly with nine men, and how they effectively lost the game in the first half. Once they went 1-0 down and got, got the man sent off, they shouldn't have, I heard Frank talking early on, they shouldn't have got to three. You know, they should have been just mm. nice and compact and, see, and seen the game out until half-time. But in the second half, they were a different team. They were excellent in the second half, but, you know, I, I blame Anco Antonio Conte's tracksuit. If he, if he wears his clothes, normal clothes, he wins that game today, simply. <laughs> Badly behaved on the first day of the season. He's probably serious though, yeah. knowing Steve. I was, yeah, I, was, yeah, no, I thought you were. OK, well, talking about Conte, let's hear from him quickly. And after the game, he was asked uh, by the press whether his starting 11 today was a message to the owners of the club. Have a listen. In every friendly game, uh, played always uh, the, uh, the best formation. And uh, it happened the same also today, because uh, my choices uh, was... Uh, to, to put the best, uh, the best uh, player uh, that we have uh, in this uh, in this moment, I, I repeat, I don't like I don't like uh, this type of uh, uh, or this habit. If someone want to send message, why I have to send message? Why, why? I want to win. I want to win. And today, I wanted to win, not to send message my my club. Why, why? And he might not have wanted to send a message, but didn't that starting 11 under the bench send a message today? Uh, yeah, but not by his choice. I think they're short on numbers, that's a fact. And uh, Pedro's injured, Eden Hazard's injured. You can't question Conte for playing Boga when everybody's criticising Chelsea for not playing young players. I think he's impressed in pre-season. Um, Moses is injured, he's had to change, plays Espel at right wing back, not ideal, he wants a wing back, but that was probably the only move he could have made today. The fact remains, they need a bigger squad, I yeah. think, and at the moment, the negative feel that coming out of Chelsea compared to the positive feel at Manchester City, at Manchester United, uh, even at Arsenal and Tottenham as such, it's not working for anybody, and you can see it on his face there, the way he's speaking, that he's how upset he is at the moment, it's a big frustration in him. And football fans don't have an awful lot of sympathy for Chelsea because they're saying, well, this might not be your dream starting eleven, but look at the number of players you've allowed to go out on loan or that you've sold under, under Conte's first 12 months in charge. I agree with that. They've created this. Uh, yeah, but if you look at the numbers of players who have gone on loan, I think it's 17 or something, but a lot of them are not near the first mm. team. Uh, and, and that's not me having them inside. I've seen them, a lot of them, and it's not a criticism of them. They're, they're developing as players. They're not knocking on the door to make a difference to come in the first team. And we, there are some there. Boga's played there, as I said, had a good pre-season. Losing Shaloba, I think, was, uh, was a mistake. I don't know how it quite happened for quite a low price as well. Lost his cheek. Really, he's got to take it upon himself now this season to show why they let him go out and show that he needs to be back there. But 
I think if, if they're going to challenge, we all want to bring young players through, and I think that should happen, and maybe it should happen more. But if you want to challenge, you need to match what Manchester City have done. They've put it all on the line this summer, and you've seen little glimpses of that today, and I think you'll see more. And, and, and Conte wants to react. He wants to move forward. Yeah, it just seems to me that there's friction behind the scenes. Um, you wonder whether all them decisions for the loans and people moving on have been decisions that are taken out of his hand, and that's why he's frustrated. We see a lot of emotion from him on the sideline, on the pitch, which is great, but that's the first time I've seen him really upset and, and emotional in, in a press conference. He's usually really calm and speaks really well. I think the questions are getting on his nerves slightly, aren't they? The fact that, you know, is that a message to the board? That is a ridiculous question because he's a serial winner and he wants to go out and win the game today. And he could have won the game with a little bit more discipline out of his side because the second half, as I said before, they were excellent. And, you know, the, the lady mentioned there, Burnley were hanging on. Even when they were down to nine men, they were hanging on. So they should have always stayed in the game. And likewise, you know, I, I'm with Frank. We've seen lots of people go out on loan. The, mm -hmm. the reason they're out on loan is to get more experience, to, be cut, to, to play loan football, football league football, or even abroad with proper men, know what it means to win a game, what three points mean. You know what win bonuses mean to lesser people, and they're there to get experience to maybe come back next year and be good enough to get in the Chelsea side. The reason they're out on loan is because they're not good enough to play in that first team at the moment, but they need strengthening massively. The side last year was different. This year they've got the Champions League round the corner. They need more people. I think one positive from today is obviously Matter getting on the score sheet. Mm. He had a difficult yeah. win last week in the, um, the charity shield and. And now he seems to be to be back, and that'll do his confidence the world of good. Yeah, they need to get him up front, uh, playing up top mm. as a goal scorer. They obviously need Eden Hazard to, to be there because Eden Hazard to me is the magic in the team. There's obviously quality throughout the team. Pedro, William, both exciting players, but Eden Hazard is the real one that can make things happen out of nothing. And they need to sort the cost of the situation out. Every time we see him on a beach in Brazil or playing football with his mates in Brazil, <laughs> it causes consternation, doesn't it? We need course, him. Yeah. We need him either gone or back and working hard and back in the team and helping the team. But that needs to be rectified very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And to add to all this, red cards today for Fabregas yeah. and Cahill as well, so they're now out for a few games and we can have a look at the, the forthcoming fixtures for Chelsea, of which they're not easy. If the board don't go and do what Conte wants them to do, and if they don't go and significantly strengthen this Chelsea side, can you still see them winning the Premier League? You said only a week ago, the Community Shield, that you're favourites for the title. Do you still stand with that? <laughs> Good question. Um, well, having looked at City today and looked at the... the the resources they've got on the bench, let alone the, the, the great starting eleven, and then you look at Chelsea. We shouldn't jump to conclusions this early. And, and yeah. Chelsea, by fact, have Eden Hazard, uh, Bakayoko will be fit, Morata will be at that, that front role. I think as a front, the first eleven, they definitely challenge. But as the season goes by now, and they're playing Champions League and all the talk, everything they're in, it's going to become harder for them to match it because he's going to have to rotate. He's going to have to find different solutions, and he might struggle now. You make a good politician. You're learning quickly. <laughs> do you want an answer? Maybe, maybe Man City are favourites now. I don't, I don't know. Listen, this, yeah. this is for, for sure the hardest year in recent memory of, of having to choose yeah. a winner because everyone's so strong. They were oh. slightly fortunate last year with injuries because they were only playing in, in the, you know, they were not playing in Europe last year, so they got away with a couple yeah. of injuries. But you know, as Frank rightly said, if you've got your starting eleven or your strong thirteen that like you can rely on every single game, they are certainly good enough and strong enough. But we know that two or three injuries decimates big teams nowadays, so you need to, you need just to bulk it up a little bit more. Okay. I think also with having Europe as well, mm, uh, yeah. last year was, was very different yeah, when you're yeah. playing a game a week. When you're coming on the, on the back of tough Champions League games and then you've got to go and have a tough Premier League game, it's mm. a completely different story. Mm. Look, I know it's hard for you to sit here and talk about the struggles for Chelsea, but don't worry, because we're not going to talk about Liverpool. Uh, and it's fair to say the fans are not particularly happy. Let's get some reaction to their draw today. Hard to take that, so hard to take. Liverpool get in the winning position after being behind. The three points looks like it's in the bag. And then yet again, poor defending of set pieces lets Liverpool down. And the first corner that Liverpool concede of the season, they concede a goal. And it's the same old problems. People will talk about Van Dijk and whether that will solve things for Liverpool. Well, for me, Liverpool have got to start defending better as a team from set pieces. This has been a consistent problem from Liverpool. It needs to change. So there you go, set piece is a consistent problem. This is a, a tweet from Rory Smith, who's a journalist, and he says, the thing is, and this applies to Liverpool and Arsenal, defending is as much about coaching as it is personnel. Now, so much talk about Virgil van Dijk and whether or not he joins Liverpool or not, but if they play their zonal defending game, which they do, whether Virgil van Dijk is in that team or not, you may 